Hey, it's Rebecca. Welcome to Returning, a podcast to return to yourself and the wisdom within. I'm so glad you're here with me. Thanks for returning. Today, I am returning with comedian, author, radio announcer, presenter, and basically just all round creative powerhouse, Tanya Hennessy. Tanya and I first crossed paths. Um, gosh, must be over 20 years ago now at university. And since then, it's been really inspiring to watch her build such a creative and also multi-passionate purpose-led career. Our conversation really travels in many different directions. Um, We touch on ambition, um, anxiety, making it in a man's world and the importance of like trusting that inner core within and really learning to live from that feminine intuitive place, like trusting our intuition, especially when it doesn't make sense. And so often, you know, it takes a little bit of hindsight to see um, that, that, and how to trust that core within. Um, beyond her skillful humor, uh, Tanya's really deeply attuned to life. She's someone who feels the world deeply. I love that so much about her. Um, and the brilliance of Tanya, I think, is how she really observes the world and people um, with such generosity, vulnerability, and relatability. Uh, Our conversation is definitely a real vibe. Uh, Tanya's fun and funny. Uh, She's interested and interesting. I think you're really going to love this chat. And um, FYI, it definitely comes with a language warning. As always, at the end of this episode, you'll find a guided soul inquiry practice for you to connect in with what your soul is calling you to do today. I know how precious your time is, so let's jump in by opening sacred space together. In the center of your heart, imagine a beautiful flower. Invite that flower to open petal by petal, revealing a light in the middle. This light is your soul, your spirit, your ancient self. Breathing deeply, taking a moment to together acknowledge the keepers and custodians of the land where you are, where I am, known and unknown. Beautiful, let's begin. So happy to chat to you. (laughs) Hi, hi, cheers. (laughs) So I think that my favorite thing that you do is those generational sketches. I just think they're so freaking hilarious. And they make me realize, like, I mean, we went to the same uni And I'm like, I just am so grateful that technology really didn't exist the way it does now when we were at uni. I'm so glad social didn't exist when I was then, back then, because like I was a Mm. mess and I was so, you know, uneducated. The Gen Z kids now are so smart and understanding and, you know, they speak in a way that is so like educated. Sometimes it's, it's top line, but like they're so... I don't, they're so mm. different and there's so many things I'm jealous of with Gen Z because I feel like as a millennial, I constantly mm. apologize for who I am, whereas Gen Zs own who they are. Mm. And I'm like, I wish I had That's some of so true personality traits. Oh, like, my God, me types. too. I know. Like I really wish when I was younger, I wish like I knew that it was actually like my weirdness and my kind of different interests that actually showed me what my passions were and like what my life path was did you have that or is it something that you found along the way what's well, so about funny that. I'll tell you this right I read I read your book um that your first book when I was like at the absolute worst place in my life and it talked about following like a little voice and a sign um, and I can't remember all the nuances. I should read it back because I devoured it and I took what I needed and mm. it actually shifted a lot for me. So that's why I was like stoked to do this podcast because I think you're really special and interesting and what you have to offer and give the world is so exciting. Um, but coming back to your question, uh, I always felt very led by a little voice that I had inside of me telling me what I needed to do and where I needed to go. I didn't understand I had it until I read your book. Mm. people wow, I that's think amazing. read light is the new black and I have given it to so many people it's my gift book like it's the book I gift people yeah. um and look for some people and you say it in the book it's too woo woo <laughs> sometimes people are like mm-hmm. it's too totally. much I'm like, I'm like you're not ready to yeah, receive I'm not, it I'm not there yet 
Yes. I'm like, you'll be back. You only reach for those kind of books when you're desperate. You have to be like, I got nothing left. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, it's so wild. So there's a part in it where it asks, and if you've not read these books, like, first of all, what are you doing? <laughs> if I do need to. But I, Why are you listening to us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's this part of the book where it says, um, ask your soul what it wants. And um, I found mm. it really difficult to do because I also listen to some of your meditations. They're so great. Like, I feel like such a fan of yours. <laughs> I feel like such a fan girl. Well, I'm a fan of yours, Tanya. <laughs> we can just, like, say, no, you're amazing. No, yes. you're amazing. <laughs> well, I, I speak about you on my podcast, actually. But, yeah, I think they must be your old mm. um because I don't know if you've done any new meditations, but your old ones I've found I just play them over and over. So I kind of hear your voice often <laughs> in my head. Um, no. It's about going, it's the, well, <laughs> it's, it's the well one. It's the going into the well and feel it. Anyway. Oh, fill up your well. Yes, that's, oh, that's the one I one. listen yep. to over and over again. Yeah, but um, there was this section that said, like, ask your soul what it wants, which is very difficult when you're an over, an overactive mind and when you're very anxious and Fully. when you are very desperate for um, – well, I think I'm very ambitious and yeah. Um, sometimes I don't know if my ambition comes from fear of being disliked or being rejected or, f- or if my ambition comes from a genuine place. You know, that's a divide that I have constantly. Mm. But I was like being still asking my soul what it wants and it said, and this is wild, I have this character that I do on the internet called Tracy from Bathurst, which is even more ironic because, you know, you're from Bathurst, we went to uni in Bathurst, blah, blah, blah. And I I started doing this character just out of boredom during COVID. I wanted to do character work and step outside of the social media stuff I'd been known for and do character work, which is scary to, to sort of do something different. And I just thought people would hate it. And I was like, I'm just doing it for me. And so I asked my soul, what do you want? And it goes, Tracy. And no shit. No there. way. Mm. So no good. Shit, I want I've, Tracy. And what yes. does Tracy do for you? Or is it more what does Tracy do for the world? <laughs> Could be a bit of both. I think, first of all, uh, Tracy's a character <laughs> who's older than me. She's going through a divorce, which is something I've not been through. Um, she has children, which is something I've mm. not experienced. But she has, you know, different issues to me. Uh, and she's not as complex as me. And so she's a lovely space to play in because I embody her in the most literal Mm. sense. So, you know, she's a nice place to escape. But the thing that what it was was I started to channel all my energy into Tracy. So then I've been pitching a television Mm. show for years, years, and I've been rejected by everyone. And I was like, I've got to dig in here. So I um. I sent all these pitch documents, got a a pilot together, got a writer's room together, paid for it myself, got some money from Screen Australia, which is really hard to get, and put another writer's room together. And we got an up to, we got a pilot episode, we got a producer, it got pitched around to everywhere, and Endemol Shine picked it up um, this year. So Endemol Shine produce a lot of excellent television. That's amazing. And uh, they are wow. And is Tracy going to be in that, or what's what's the show about? It's called Highlights because she's a hairdresser, and it's also like the highlights <laughs> of her life. I get it. Yeah, and, I love but it, it. But it's also the lowlights of her life because I think you know, anytime you study yeah, a character, yeah, yeah. someone also like the thing that's the best for Tracy is for her to break up with her husband. The worst thing that could ever happen to Tracy is to break up with her husband and those two like live right. side by side, you know? Mm. So um, the show That's is essentially amazing. that. So it's like, what, what did, what was your soul calling you to do? And it was Tracy, but then I love that because I think this is when you know it's your intuition. Cause it's like, what? That doesn't make any sense. And you don't know where it's going. And then eventually you're like, Oh, I've got a TV show. <laughs> But yeah. I think you've demonstrated how, like, you need, it's not just, like, all about, like, oh, I'm going to meditate and I'm going to, like, get this guidance that makes no sense. Like, you got to act on it. Like, you know, it wasn't just, like, pitching it once. you got to, like, keep it going. And I think this is why, like, to fully embody, like, our purpose and all of that, 
we actually need a decent amount of willpower, which is basically comes from our ego. Like, otherwise we're just not going to like embody it. And so just something you said before about like, is it like, like which part of me is it kind of filling up? And it's like, you kind of need both parts to be acting. And I think for me, it's like the, the biggest change in my life happened when I was like, no, I'm going to let that that wise part of me, the soul intuition, be the one that runs the show. And then I'm going to be right, get the ego and the willpower and the body and all of that to work. And it doesn't mean that I spend more time in the meditative soul space, but that is the one who's like the CEO of my life. (laughs) Yeah. And it's so funny because I think a lot of people think that you either have like spirituality or psychology, but I actually believe that they can work really nicely together Mm. because my psychologist offers a very similar piece of advice, which is let the wise part of your soul or wise part of you, however she does it mathematically, you know, uh, be your guide. And it's it's when you've got it from two angles, I feel like I can't ignore it now. Like I've got to listen to Mm. my wise part. But Totally. Yeah. And like for you – Cause you feel like, so it sounds like you always like had that inner voice, but it was just like, what is it or whatever? Like, do you, did you feel like at a young age, cause you're like, you're so, so multi-passionate. You have, you just like go and it, from my perspective, it seems like you just like go and be like, right, I'm going to go do this. You've got kids book, you've got self-help books out there as well as being presenter and comedian and like all of this, you're just like going for it. Did you always like at a young age, like have this kind of like, mm, kind of like, oh, I'm here for a reason. I want to get shit done. Like, did you have that or is it something that came later? Oh, yes. Like when I was 14, I directed a play. Um, I just yeah. very, I just was born ambitious. Like I walked when I was seven months old. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Really yeah. It's like, right, I'm here. I'm going to get the job done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At my first birthday, I was yeah. talking and I was like, because I have a seven-month-old nephew, and I'm like, wow, that's wild. How I just, is that possible? <laughs> how? I wasn't talking well, but I was wow. trying to c- communicate, you know what I mean? I think um, I've just yeah. been very driven, but I I, uh, I think it's, like, closely linked to, to storytelling. It's, like, I'm very interested in people and, and stories and connecting, and I think that the art of storytelling, no matter which way it, it is, is what I'm passionate about. So the reason I'm multidiscipline is I'm just taking the same story or taking the same skill set, but just using it to talk to them, but use it in different ways, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. Yeah. And I think there's just like so many different ways to express ourselves. Like when you're a creative, it's just like, I think just like doing one thing sometimes feels like so limited. Um, and yes. Like for you being a comedian, like when, where did that come in? Was it something like, were you just like very funny and then you're like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to be a comedian or was it, were you inspired by someone? No, I think it came from more of a perspective of um, this is just the main thing that I do. Uh, so I was in radio for 10 years, which is so wild, right? Because when I was at uni, I dated this boy who did commercial radio and I broke up with him because, and I quote, remember I was a theatre student, <laughs> it's too commercial. It's capitalism. Like, I don't think you understand. Yeah, I've just right. come back from like a theatre camp where I was shoeless and I'm very connected to myself <laughs> and I don't want to talk about ads. And that's your passion, obviously. <laughs> and now I'm like, so I've done 10 years in commercial radio. <laughs> <laughs> but what it is is like the connection and the storytelling yeah. which I'm really interested in and to do it and survive you kind of I have a very yeah. weird relationship with capitalism like I find it totally so hard. I think we I think many of us do and yeah I mean but I can see it being like and I get like the ad piece but um it's it's just a platform for you to reach loads of people right a hundred percent. But think it's like double cleansing your skin. People are like, it's such a great idea. <laughs> I'm like, is it? Or is it making you use the product twice as often so you go through it twice as <laughs> regularly so you have to buy it more? <laughs> like, I, I really I know. struggle with it's it. It's so complex. Yes. And I like, you know, day and night cream. 
night cream is day cream marketed differently and it just sends yeah. me down a well I <laughs> like, but yeah, yeah i feel like comedy was the thing i was doing the most so it was just easier to brand myself as that but it was very difficult too and i still find it hard because i still have massive imposter syndrome like you know oh yeah and being a girl in comedy is hard yeah right yeah let's talk about that because i i know what it's like to be in a boys club as well and then find your way yeah, so tell you me in like what radio must be like that for you yeah i went into advertising i was in the creative department um and yeah it was interesting it was like I kind of, I always was like really confused why I did that. And like, I now look back and I'm like, oh my God, it like actually really helped me with my writing. Cause I started as a copywriter and then creative director. Um, and there was like so many things cause I loved media and like, I would literally be like praying every day and being like, right, I can meet, meet, I can reach millions of people and I'm going to put positive messages out there and kind of like code them in or whatever. But it was just fucking hard. But oh, so I learned so much in the process and, but yeah, total boys club, like, oh my God, it was like, you had to kind of, I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I was like, so just trying to be one of the boys in a way when actually my real gift was to be in my feminine, which I would do. I would literally like walk along the beach on the beach every morning and like connect with nature to give me the ideas. And then I'd have to go into work and just pretend to come up with ideas with like creative partners. And then I'd go to my boss and deliver all my ideas and all my headlines. And you'd have to do like 200 to get one good one. Ooh. And he'd like scrunch them up and throw them in the bin until you got one good one. But it was, I look back now and cause I, I'm very sensitive. It was such good training for me to like not take things personally, which I definitely still do, but I don't, I, it, it built up like quicker. this reserve of like, yeah. And there's always another idea and it helped me that one develop my always. creative process with God or with, with whatever force it is that's there. Cause that's where I got all my creative ideas from. I just didn't tell anyone. <laughs> Yeah, now me too. I'm like, oh my God, if I was in advertising, I'd pr probably like develop like a whole process on it. And maybe it's time that I would like, it would be welcomed, but I don't know. What's, what's it like for you? How has it, it changed? Cool. I would love mm. to see that. And I think that people, especially like we were talking about before, the Gen Z's are so switched on and interested and interesting and I think something like a new wave of approaching creativity through um you know your connection to self connection to your spirituality the universe would be a game changer like I think that that is a book you should absolutely consider or even some sort of literature in that space it's coming <laughs> oh really okay mm -hmm. oh wow yeah it's like isn't it funny the timing is everything because um, I feel like I'm often not in my feminine femininity and I'm, I'm going through, um, years and years of infertility and IVF and, you know, it's zero out of 10. And the, I, I see like healers as well as, you know, IVF doctors, but I also see yeah. like acupuncture. I do Western and Eastern. Um, yeah. I see a lot of oh, kinesiologists yeah. and a lot of, yeah, just healers. And the main thing I get is you're living in your masculine. I'm like, because I work with men. Mm. And oh. so it's so difficult to, you know, be funny and be there and available. And like everyone wants you drunk, which I'm not, you know, I don't want to be drunk mm. all the time because I've got a very, yeah, I want to yeah. use the morning and I want to write. And um, I don't know, particularly in radio, you have meetings in boardrooms with men about what the target audience is, which are women, and you're sitting there the only woman. Ugh, like it's so weird and backwards. And I yeah, I so hear you. It's been a while since I've been in those places. Of it, I I remember like, yeah, just really having to be in masculine. Even just like I remember just being kind of like, yeah, ha, 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 you know, like just even like the way my voice would be like, oh my god. Yeah, and, and alcohol as well because you kind of, oh, yeah. 
because they hear. relax and God. they're you know socializing around alcohol and right. cigars and i remember this one time our boss came to town like our sort of content boss from sydney and we were in canberra at the time and they all went out for dinner yeah. and it was like t-bones and steak night right and i saw it all on instagram this was like 2016 and I saw the my co announcer the next day and I was like, oh, why did you go out and have dinner with everyone? He was like, oh, it was a boys' night. I was like, yes, but I'm the only girl in yeah, this you're and like the extended literally team. literally excluding me. I was like, so you literally had a business meeting in which I was in, not included, but I can't complain to anyone because my boss was in that meeting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I am, like, successful yeah. in spite of what happened to me because every single person who went to that dinner oh. that night – I, they do not have a career. So, you know, as much as I go, that was a shitty thing to happen. I think you can either choose to be angry or choose to move through it and follow mm. the calling instead of the anger. A lot of it is just like going, okay, that happened. And that was really awful. I can either carry that baggage around or put it down for my greater mm. good. And so I've, I've had to learn to put a lot, a lot down. And I just think, I don't want to be that angry person with no, nothing <laughs> but i think that the anger like it sounds to me like you actually use the anger to create because i think like anger and it is a very feminine thing actually like the to instead of like direct the anger to destruction i'm, I'm going to be stereotypical here but that's like war that's like the masculine kind of it can be the feminine too but yeah um but to turn it into something like creation versus destruction it's a really like we got to make a, a decision and uh, if we go destruction yeah often like we destruct ourselves in the process as well whereas it seems to me like you just use the and this is a very feminine thing of um yeah like you can either choose like um death and destruction or rebirth which you kind of need to die to then be born again, you know? And those like, like those months of like autumn and winter where we're kind of like, oh my God, I'm literally surrendering everything here and I'm going to start all over again. That's so feminine. You've been so open with your journey with IVF and endometriosis as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I obviously have gone on to have kids, but I've had several miscarriages um, and endometriosis as well. And I know just like how full on that process is, but um, like how, how has it been for you to like share that? Cause it must be like such a push pull of like, it's so personal, but also it's so like, it helps so many people knowing they're not alone. Yeah. It's like exactly that war internally, but it's also, um, sometimes I'm better able and better equipped to handle it publicly than I am at, you know, cause hormones <laughs> and fail fails right. and you're in a hospital and people want to take photos of you, which is fine, but it's also like bad timing. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Think, yeah. Yeah. Fully. And sometimes people don't quite understand. And I feel like it's not my job to educate. Like people go, how dare you not want to foster children? Right. How dare you not want to adopt? Like oh, it's, my God. It's And I'm like, no, it's not that. I understand. I also mm. have experience with adoption and foster within my family, and I have seen some pretty tough things, and that has informed those decisions. And this is what I'm saying. You see this, like you see the tip of the iceberg, but you do not see, you know, with every situation. Uh, so right. A lot of it is I share on particular platforms. So I will talk about it on Instagram and TikTok. You will never see me yeah, talk about it on right. fucking Facebook. <laughs> yeah, right. That's interesting. And so do you have like, like, how do you find the, like the celebrity thing and like, you know, boundaries and, and yeah, <laughs> just like, does it come easy to you or do you love and hate it or yeah. How do you navigate it? I, I mean, first of all, I don't identify as a celebrity. Like, I would never be like, oh, celebrity here. Like, I don't see myself like that. <laughs> um, I do appreciate. But Tracy does, right? Tracy Absolutely. from Bathurst, right? <laughs> yes. She's like, yeah, she's an icon in her own mind. But, Loves um, it. <laughs> it's more like um, 
I I'm often very like, how did this happen? <laughs> yeah, but like I feel like I fell down a well uh, with <laughs> because of your meditation. But I feel like I've like what? <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. like shit. This all like here you know I am. I mean? Here I like how did I get here? But I I. I I'm very grateful for it. I have to stay grateful because, you know, I was a young artist who had no money, lived in Sydney, went to 140 auditions, couldn't even afford to go to work, like couldn't afford to drive my car to work so I'd have to walk to Luna Park as a clown. I had to walk to Centrelink to get my money for the week. I'm humbled for the fact that someone wants to publish a book of mine. Someone wants to buy that book of mine. Somebody wants to come and see me do a live show. Like... I'm constantly like thankful that someone cares about my art and I think that I think a lot of kids come up now because of uh, social and they've only ever been successful on Instagram or successful on TikTok and now they earn $25,000 a post and I'm like I can't imagine that I have been the struggling artist until I was about 38 sorry 28 um maybe 29 so, like, sounds bad. Yeah, but the totally. Years of failing have made a good, and they make me whole, and they make me more relatable, and they make me. I feel like because of everything I've gone through, I'm an important voice in the Australian media. I'm not a naive voice. Mm, I'm not a young yes. voice. I'm not a silly voice. I am irreverent, but I'm also really smart, and I've been through a lot of things. I'm from a regional background. I don't. I've not earned a lot of money. My parents aren't really rich. You know what I mean? It's like I am the yeah. every man and I should be talking about the budget and I should be talking about how this like yes, crisis I love that. of the economy is affected because it affects me and I'm still connected to that girl who grew up in Newcastle and had no money and I am that poor artist. You know, like I am the one who should yeah. be in this chair, and not w- Sally Vaucluse. <laughs> yeah, fully, fully. And with your with your books like do you feel like you kind of wrote them for yourself like the younger yous we'll return with tanya's answer after this short break the inner temple mystery school was the most profound intense and deeply moving nine months of my life it's really allowed me to feel empowered within my body and also to celebrate life the inner temple mystery school has really helped me to show up for myself every day in my practice deepen my practice i've become more connected with the world around me and have started seeing with new eyes the inner temple mystery school has changed how i see myself how i relate to my soul and how I feel so much more connected to the world around me. Visit rebeccacampbell.me forward slash mystery school to learn more. Now let's keep returning. And with your with your books, like, do you feel like you kind of wrote them for yourself? Like the younger yous? I felt like um, I asked the universe for an idea. And it, I yeah. wrote my first kid's book, Stevie Louise, which is a junior fiction book, 15,000 words. It is based on, loosely based on my childhood, but also not. Like it's crazy. It was channeled through me and it, I wrote it in three weeks and didn't sleep. And um, it's basically wow. how it was printed is how it was written. There was very few edits. Um, it was channeled like that book and it's a play now. And it sells so well still to this day. Like I I know your books sell really, really well. Um, And it's such an amazing feeling when something so raw as like you're writing for some reason just feels, it hits different. Don't you reckon? I don't know. Mm. Well, I think with with writing, um, I think there's something about like the intimacy of it. So it's like someone is there, it's just you and you and them. And um, yeah, I think the, the biggest compliment I, the, the most meaningful compliment for me is when someone says it feels like you wrote it just for me. And I'm like, oh yes. And I think that's what books do, you know, like they just, there's an intimacy there. 
Yeah, and and I think it's interesting because I really resonate with what you were saying about like there's so many different ways to express ourselves, right? Um, I remember for me, I knew like from a very young age, I was like just obsessed with the unseen world and spirit and all of that. And I kind of like was in a massive closet and like, you know, by by night I'd be doing all these workshops and trainings and by day I'd be like just being a normal kid, getting drunk and, you know, yes. kissing boys and stuff. Yes. Um, but um I remember actually um, Amy Firth and I chatting and I was just like, oh, I just like know there's so many things I want to do, but I just have to pick one thing to call myself. And the the most like normal thing that I can do is just write a book so I can be an author and I could be like, Rebecca Campbell, author. Author. Because <laughs> then at least it's like, okay, just I'm an author. Is everyone, okay, is that clear? Okay, great. Now I can go and create other stuff. Do, do you, was that kind of like similar with you with comedian or, For or sure. presenter or? It was actually really funny. So I said to Tom that I was doing this podcast with you and he goes, how would you yeah. describe her? And I said, oh, <laughs> I mean, mm. she's written heaps of books, so author, which is funny. And then I was like, I don't know. She's like, Oprah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he goes he goes yeah it's, is, it's so hard well because yeah he goes is this the girls who whose cards you have because he had a pen <laughs> a, a bucks night right and your card you have these cards for those people listening home she has these like cards that are like tarot cards but not you pick a card and it's sort of then you go to the little book and it tells you what card you pulled and what it means and how it can like refer to you. Tom goes to a <laughs> Bucks night. The Bucks night comes back to my house. I wake up at 4 a.m. All the boys are reading these fucking cards, pissed as a fucking newt. One of them's being like, Oh my God. The adventurer. It means that as a star seed. <laughs> You did the star seed deck, just, you know, starting at the beginning. <laughs> just make me laugh because they're all silent. Like, fuck, drunk as a, you know, been out drinking since 11 a.m. It's 4 a.m. And they're sitting around <laughs> doing, like, quote, unquote, angel cards. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Oh, I love that. Bless. Just so funny. Yeah, the card maker. <laughs> it doesn't have the yeah. same ring, does it? Because it is really the hard witch, to... The, uh... <laughs> Well, I said, oh, you know, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, she lives in the UK because she moved to be closer to, what, how would you describe your move? Like, I would say it's a spiritual connection. I mean, I think, I think at first it was just like, I felt like this call within me to like explore and kind of, um, yeah, I had the same ambition, I think that you had and like, London, well, I could get a visa in London, but London felt like big and like the center of the world, you know? And then um, yeah, I had like amazing friends and a whole group of friends from uni and we just had a ball here. Yes. And then I had a breakup and then he went back to Australia. And so I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to, and then, um, yeah. And then you just build your life. My publisher is based here and America as well and, and Australia, but it was like my core publisher was here. And then I used to come to, uh, so I was in London for like 15 years. And then I used to go to um, Glastonbury just on my own. And I used to run retreats and stuff. And yeah, we just did not plan to move here, but we, but we were called and, um, we were about to move back to Australia and then we just literally moved and my husband's from Melbourne originally. So we're just like, well, let's, let's just go on a new, a new adventure. We're thinking it was going to be like six months. And then yeah, we ended up getting pregnant with my son, like as soon as we moved here and then COVID happened. And then we're like, Oh shit, I think we're here we now, here. you know? <laughs> so I don't know. But when I reflect on it, yeah, I was like, what? But when I reflect on it, um, this is going to sound like definitely woo woo, but there's something around. Um, so this particular town, it's like very unique. It's uh, like, people know about Glastonbury because of the festival, but the festival came because of the energy of Glastonbury. Um, and it's a, a place where it literally is in devotion to the goddess. So it's in devotion to the feminine. I've and, heard this. Um, yeah, people celebrate the Celtic Wheel of the Year and all of that. And I think that I'm kind of like being taught um, my old ancestral wisdom teachings through being here because, you know, I'm a white 
woman. I grew up in Australia on land different to my ancestry. And, but I do like deep spiritual work. I've studied um, herbalism and lots of different things where I connect in with the wisdom of the land. And I think there is some peace around that. And I don't know how long I'll be here. I don't like, I, I'm, I'm actually going back to Australia for six weeks. I've got an event and then I've got um, my brother's wedding. So yeah, like we want to spend more time in Australia. I think we might move back there at some stage, but we're definitely being like, planted here for now which is but it's it's a mystery it's like kind of what you were saying about like you know those things where you know the character from Bathus comes in and you're like what <laughs> yeah yes i think exactly you, you can you can always see like the thread that's being that you're being led by in hindsight and then you've got a great story to tell and be like oh yeah it was just you know it was just meant to happen but like when you're living it you've got no freaking clue no, and this is why stories are so excellent. So that's a in short retrospect. answer. <laughs> right, right. Like, like if I tell a story okay. that happened to be that's really sad, if it got a lull at the end or like a good, uh, right, you know, <laughs> like a beating structure, it's just sad. So, like, anyway, I could talk about storytelling. I hear you. Yeah. yeah, we can always. Yeah, oh yeah, you, you're a master of it. But um, yeah, it always sounds better in the end, doesn't it? All right, so I have a question for you. So how are you changing right now? Like what's changing in your life? How are you changing? Well, I actually feel like I'm in the most liminal space of liminal spaces, which is sort of that in-between state, just a very fancy psychological word for it. Um, but I feel like mm. I'm changing because I have been, because I work in social media, a lot of people view me a certain way, which is like, quote unquote, as an influencer, um, because I work on social, I was like, <laughs> it's, I, I wish I could just be hot enough to take a picture on a beach and be like, beach, go to the beach at Marriott <laughs> hotels. You know what I mean? Like I actually, uh, don't do that. And so <laughs> to you I think, though, I don't think you do. I don't think, no, you do. I don't, I don't do that. So I'm re <laughs> like my change is that I am no, I'm saying, I don't think you want to either. Oh no, it's so against, it's so, mm. so mm. I think my change is that I'm coming into my own. It's okay. If someone mm. calls me that and misconstrues how they perceive me, I know mm. what I do and I know how uh, what I'm creating and who it's for. If somebody misconstrues me, I don't have to be mad at them or change it in my contract mm -hmm. <laughs> um, or get like <sighs> furious. I can go, okay, you don't see me mm. holistically and that's cool. You've seen one video and your perception is that your perception is not my reality. Mm. Like, but I don't know, to be honest, I, I wish I was changing more, but not being able to conceive has left me and for so long has left me in this really like stagnant place where I, cause you go a little bit forward, a little bit back, a little bit forward, 500 steps back. So I, I don't know. Change is a tough one for me right now. And tell me like, if you feel back to your younger self, um, so maybe like the part of you when you were like really wanting to, make it as an artist, as an actor, and like slogging it out. Like what advice would you give that part of you? I'm just thinking like if there's anyone out there who's kind of like, I've got a dream, but is it really going anywhere? It should be happening faster. What would you say? Oh, um, <laughs> I would say sometimes some things are not meant for you, but skills are transferable. For example, um, I was not meant to be an actor because the greatest role I'll ever play is myself. And that's mm. why all the success I've ever had is just being me and doing things and telling my stories and telling it through my lens because there's no other Tanya Hennessy, but there's no other you. You are like your greatest superpower. Um, and that lesson is something I chuck into my kids' books at any point because I'm like, maybe I'll speed this lesson up for you. <laughs> But um, I don't know, sometimes if you love it enough, you've got to push for it. But also if it doesn't work out, that's also fine. You will be caught. But also if you have a voice in you that says you've got to sing, like you've got to sing. I don't know, like you'll have a sad life unless you fucking sing. 
Would you rather have results or excuses? Like don't have, like, don't be paralyzed by your anxiety. Don't let it win. I have a fucking battle with my anxiety every day. I refuse to let her win. I love that. Yeah. And I, I think that's the thing that not that many people talk about because I, pretty much all the successful people I know actually have that anxious voice within them or, or it's something that they're overcoming or overcome at some stage. For me, um, I remember, I forget the quote, but one of my teachers used to say that fear is excitement without the breath. It's like, it's an old quote. I forget who said it. Um, that's good. And oh my God, that's so true. It's like, I think when we, when we like have this calling within us or something to share and we're not sharing it, then the anxiety like just builds up and like freezes us. Whereas actually when we breathe in and like just kind of live into it and definitely there's definitely lots of stuff to do with like nervous system healing, like somatic stuff. I'm a big big advocate for that has been so transformative for me. You don't have to live with the, like the crippling fear forever. But I think sometimes the only thing harder than, than um, answering the call is not answering it. That's been the case for me. How about you? Yeah. The thing is (laughs) um, mine's very loud and deafening and I've not been able to hear anything else. And even other people have been like, Tanya, it's a lot. You don't need to do it. And I'm like, this is back in the day. Uh, and my dad was like, be a banker. I was like, I am dyslexic. I can't do numbers. Like I can't do anything. Like Beck, this is, I was born to do this. I am here for this reason. I'm so lucky that my purpose has always been so loud. You know, not everyone has a purpose that is deafening and mine is deafening. And I'm so glad of it because I've seen people who don't have deafening callings and what it, what it does to them. Or maybe they're not listening. But if you, you like, right. you, I don't know. I'm like, you've got to go for it. Just go. Yeah. The fully. only person who loses out is you. Yeah. Totally. Oh, Tanya. So, so good. I'm glad we did this. Tell yeah, everyone how they can find you. Oh, okay. I'm at Tan Hennessy, T-A-N-H-E-N-N-E-S-S-Y on Instagram. And I'm, I don't know, Tanya Hennessy, T-A-N-Y-A Hennessy on TikTok. Awesome. Oh, I'm about to cough. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't die. We need your Love brain. You. Oh, thank you so much for having me, honestly. <laughs> You're so special so and good. interesting. Yep. I just want to see you soar, and I know you will. So thank you for having me. Today's soul inquiry prompt is, what is your soul calling you to step into? And as always, what is one baby step you can take in that direction today? Let's share a breath together as we close this sacred space we've stepped into. I'm so grateful for you being here. If you'd like to keep returning to yourself and returning here with me, then please hit subscribe. If you love this podcast, leaving a review or a five-star rating really helps others to find it too. And so I so appreciate if you could do that. You can, as always, find the show notes from today's episode over at rebeccacampbell.me forward slash podcast. Thanks for returning.